Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Luis Chavez. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based out of Southern California. And in this week's video, I thought it'd be helpful if I go through the menu system and the Q2. I know there's a lot of interest back into the this camera this year. And so I wanted to do one of these videos. So in case you're interested in purchasing it or renting it, you kind of see where everything is. That way when you get it, you're not fiddling around with the menu system and seeing where everything is. The Leica Q2 menu system is actually very, very simple, which is something I appreciate. And one of the things I like the most about this camera is when you press the menu, the first thing you'll see is a toggle between photo and video. So you get all your most frequently used settings here for photo. But if you switch over to video, everything just switches over to video, which is really useful if you're using this camera for not just photos. I don't use it that much for video, but it has a beautiful image. So if you're interested in kind of trying out the video aspects of this camera, it Leica makes it very easy to go through the menu system, especially since you're going from like a Leica SL2S or the Leica SL2. This menu system is very similar, especially at, uh, I'm, I'm pretty positive that they the Leica Q2 inherited this menu system from those cameras, which is something uh, I like the most about them. So as you can see, it's very easy. You just tap on photo, all your uh, menu items change. And if you go to video, all your menu items change. So if you go here to photo, you can switch it from uh, full on automatic and to all these different settings. And if you press the menu button again, you go back to that menu and you can see here your shutter speed, your ISO and exposure compensation. If your, um, your f-stop changes, since there's an um, f-stop ring on the actual lens, it makes it really, really helpful. So if you switch it over, on the actual lens, you'll see it change in the menu system. So that's that makes it really, really cool. That way, if you wanna, wanna change all your settings on the fly just from the screen, you can do that. So moving along to this bottom row here, um, you get all these options. So the first one is between autofocus, uh, single shot, or continuous. I never shoot in continuous unless I'm doing a wedding. And even then, it's very, very um, uh, all over the place. I prefer single shooting autofocus since the Leica Q2 is a contrast-based autofocus. <laughs> Um, I don't trust it that well for like moving subjects, even though I haven't had that many issues in the past, but I don't like to take my chances on uh, like weddings or portrait shoots. So moving along to the next option is the focusing mode. So as you can see, there's very different options. There's face detection, there's tracking, there's field, there's spot, and there's multi-field. I usually kind of don't go through any of these. The one I use the most is the field one, and it just makes the focusing point a little bit bigger. And as you can see, right in the center of the screen. But if I wanted to make it bigger, all I do is tap it. And then there's that the dial that I use for exposure compensation, you can make it bigger. So that's the biggest you can do for this, but you can make it a lot smaller. So I toggle it between this and a bigger one, depending on my subject, but it works really, really nicely. Other than that, um, you also get your traditional tracking. I find that tracking works better than face detection. Face detection doesn't work all that great, but if you want to track a subject, just tracking works pretty well. There's also spot mode, which is a lot smaller, and but you get a lot more control where you're going to put your uh, focusing point. And to um, dial in your focusing point, you can either use this um, the buttons here or you can use the actual touchscreen. I go between back, I go back and forth, but I mainly use this wheel here. And the last one is multi-field. That's, you know, that's up to the camera what it's gonna focus on. I don't really use this very often. I find that it's kind of all over the place. And usually I like to be more in control of my compositions and what's in focus and what's not, since I tend to use uh, uh, shooting um, at, at a more shallow depth of field whenever I am working. So I usually don't trust that. So I, I highly ever use it. The next option is drive mode. And I almost never use anything other than single shot because I don't like to shoot tons of photos. I don't like to like take up space, especially if I'm doing like um, street photography or anything like that, because there's no need for it. But if I'm doing a portrait session or a wedding or anything like that, and there's something that has a lot of motion, that's when I go to continuous and low speed. I don't like tons of pictures taking up my buffer. And I find it that the buffer fills up pretty fast, especially if not using cards that are fast enough. So low is usually pretty good for me, but you also get all these other options. You get medium speed, you get high speed, you get very high speed and interval shooting and exposure bracketing. So if you like to do interval shooting, if you like to do, um, and you'd like to do multiple exposures, um, you have all these options here to do that as well. Next up is the way that your picture profile looks like. 
Um, if you're shooting in RAW, this doesn't really matter too much. But if even if you are shooting in RAW, um, this kind of dictates the, the image you're going to see. So the one I stick to is natural, but you also get standard, vivid, and oops, you get standard, vivid, natural, black and white natural, and black and white high contrast. So I always travel between um, natural or black and white natural. I find that those two are the most pleasing to my eye. And besides, I always shoot in RAW anyway. So that's just so I can see things are the least like uh, intense. So like, I don't like anything that's super contrasty or super saturated. I just like to see things as, as most neutral as possible. That way when I get in post, I can put those colors in if I wanted. So I can add the contrast, I can add the colors. So I find that natural is the most pleasing. Other than natural, I really like the black and white profile here. So I do shoot in RAW plus JPEG a lot of the time, just if I want to keep those um, black and white JPEG files as well. Next up is your profile. So you can um, dial in all your settings on this Q2 and save them to profile. So this is where this, this lives. So as you can see here, I have a, a couple of them. This is for when I go out shooting daily. So it's not necessarily street photography because I'm not really a street photographer for if I'm out shooting. That's the, the options that I have. So I have all my settings here. I have uh, shutter speed on automatic, but I like to dial in my f-stop and usually I'm shooting an ISO 400 since I like to shoot in high speeds uh, and I like to move around with my f-stop a lot. That way I'm not fiddling around with um, exposure and stuff like that. My uh, exposure compensation is always usually um, a full stop under since the Q2 tends to overexpose highlights. I want to make sure that I can um, um, bring in that detail back into the image if I need to. So I always like to just be safe and uh, underexpose my image. And I think with a lot of Leicas, because I've also worked with the Leica SL2S, I tend to underexpose on those cameras as well since um, it recovers shadows really well, but not so much the highlights. My next profile is street at night, and that's just more auto ISO since this camera shoots pretty good in high ISOs. I wouldn't say amazing, but 6400, it's good enough for me. I don't mind a little noise. So that's one of the things that I like to just keep it at. And my exposure compensation is just dialed at zero. I don't really do anything with that since I don't worry too much about highlights at night. And I like to just have full control of that anyway. So I keep that at zero anyway. And my last... And then my last, and then my last profile is just portraits. So it's what I use for weddings, and it's all manual. <clears throat> and then my last profile is just portraits, which is anything that's paid. So depending on the day or depending on the time of day, if it's a wedding or if it's a portrait shoot, I like to have full control over all my settings. So I like to keep that at full manual. But the, the cool thing about this is if you get lost in all of your different profiles, you can also go to the standard profile and it goes back to um, the default profile here on the camera. Next up is exposure metering and you get three options here, multi-field, you get center weight, and then you get spot. I don't like to shoot a lot on spot or um, center weighted metering. I usually stick to multi-field and that's just because I like to have like a pretty balanced image and then even so I like to have even more control over it so um, that's usually like my base and then I just dial it in in camera but I find that multi-field is a good base. Next up is your white balance here and as you can see there's tons of options you can go full auto. The automatic uh, white balance on the Q2 is not great so I usually dial it in anyway and I do that by default because I'm a wedding photographer so I like to have full control over that too but as you can see here you get a bunch of different options you get daylight you get cloudy you get shadow you get tungsten uh, your flash setting your gray card and then color temperature so if you want to really dial in your color temperature for your exposure you can do that here as well the next option here is what kind of files you want to save so you can go full dng or a large jpeg large jpeg only middle JPEG plus TNG, middle JPEG, small JPEG plus TNG, or small JPEG only. And I don't really mess with any of these. I usually do large JPEG and DNG just because, um, especially for my personal stuff, um, I like to have a ready to go JPEG image in case like I take a picture of a family member or something. Um, I can give it to them straight away without having to edit anything. And I find that the Q2 files are really pleasing. So I don't really have to like 
I don't feel like I need to edit them if I don't have to. So it's really nice to have a really nice JPEG image to give to somebody. And I know it's kind of, it varies on taste, but I find that the JPEGs out of the Q2 are really, really nice. So lastly here is the Leica Photos tab, which is basically just how to pair the camera to the Leica Photos app, which is the app that you can use to control your camera or to transfer images to your phone. So you can use the same app for the Leica Q2, the SL2S, the SL2, the Leica M10, and the Leica M11, I believe. So it makes it really useful. The pairing process is very, is very easy, so I can go through that as well. Okay, to set up your Leica Q2 on the Leica Photos app, you have to download the app onto your phone, and then you'll see this screen here, the connect to camera. You press the plus sign, and you look for the Leica Q2, which is Leica Q, Q system. You go to Q2, and it'll prompt you to do this on the camera, which we will go ahead and do. You go to menu, you go to this, you go Bluetooth on, and then you go to pair and you'll see the same screen on your like a camera, your Q2. So when you see the same screen on both your phone and your camera, you press continue and it'll detect the camera. You press connect and you'll see the Q2 connecting to your phone. You will, it will ask you to join the network. You will press join and it'll add it to your phone. And here you can check whether or not you wanna turn on geotagging. I don't use geotagging. All that much or at all actually so i press don't use and i don't really like notifications clogging up my phone so i put don't allow so once you get to the leica q2 camera on your phone it'll detect it and it'll connect to it so right now it's trying to connect to camera and this always takes a minute or two so especially with newer cameras so on the once you get that camera set up you will see your uh, all the photos that are on your phone on your camera as already so you can see I took some photos here and you can choose to download them right to your phone um, to the DNG or preview but if you're shooting raw plus JPEG it also gives you the option to download just the JPEG or both the raw and the JPEG so you can see you can see all the photos you also get your battery meter on your camera at the top and it's a list of all the pictures you already took but you can also remote control your camera as well and let's see here I have it connected to my camera. As you can see, I'm recording this video and you can also tap to focus on your on the on the screen. Doesn't do that great of a job, but when you're tapping on faces, I find it that's a lot more useful. But if you're just using it for anything else, then it's not the best. So you can see here, you can also adjust your shutter speed, your f-stop as well, or and you can put everything on manual on automatic, I should say. So your ISO, your f-stop and your shutter speed, but you can also do your exposure compensation. And you have also video settings here, uh, which is all the exact same thing. And you can also record video from here. So hopefully this was useful for uh, those of you who want to connect to an app. I found the app is better than most, but it's not amazing. As you know, with most camera manufacturers, they don't put a lot of time, I guess, on their camera apps because they're all kind of terrible. But like us, it's not amazing, but it's the best that I've ever used. So besides a super simple menu, once you get to the last tab, you can also go into your main menu. And the cool thing about this is even if you don't want to go through this, if you like a more traditional kind of settings, you can press the menu item again and you can go back to your favorites. So um, you can actually customize this whole row into whatever you want. So to do that, you can go to page three and you go to customize control and then you go to edit favorites and you have uh, full control over these. It's just an on and off toggle, but you get all of the different options, drive mode, interval, shooting, exposure bracketing, self timer, focus assist, and so on and so forth. So anything that you would like to be on your first tab on your menu, you can put on there. So that makes it really easy if you don't wanna dial in, dive in through all of the menu items or through all of the different tabs. The, everything is right here for you to toggle onto the first one. And once you put that on there, you go back to menu, you press menu again, and all of that is here. But if you wanna go to the main menu, all you have to do is press menu, menu again, and then you're here onto your actual uh, different settings. So you can go through all of your different pages. So 
So going into the main menu, I'm not going to go through every single tab here since I don't want this video to be super long. But And we already went through some of these options already, but um, I will go through things that I haven't covered already. So really, really quickly. So self-timer, if you want to know how, how much time you get, you get either two minutes or tw uh, two seconds, I should say, or 12 seconds. You go back to the main menu. And one cool thing about this next tab here is focusing. So you get all your focusing modes, and we already went through a lot of these. But um, one of the cool things is you can use touch out of focus and touch out of focus and EVF. So if you toggle that on, you can actually use the, you can use your finger finger to um, move your focusing point around while you have your eye onto the EVF. So it's really useful if you want to um, change the focus really, very really quickly and you don't want to like have to look at the back of the screen or look at or use this little tab right here. So it's really useful if you want to use that so you don't have to take your eye off of the actual EVF. We already went through exposure metering, exposure compensation, your ISO. Here's all your ISO settings. I have this ISO set to 400 and your auto ISO settings. It's the one that you, if you want to dial it in, you can go into this menu. So here you can press the, or pick the maximum ISO you want to go. And like I said, I don't mind 6400, but some people might feel more comfortable in 32, but I'll, this is where all your different options are. You can also um, pick your minimal shutter speed or your maximum ISO with flash. I don't have a flash with this camera, so I don't even have that set up, but if you have a flash, this is where you do it at. White balance, again, this is white balance if you wanna um, dial in your white balance, but it's all your other options as well. In the second menu tab, you get your photo file format, we already went through that, or your JPEG settings, your maximum JPEG resolution, your color management, or your film style. One of the features that Leica likes to um, promote a lot is a digital zoom here on the Leica Key 2 and you get a 42 megapixel sensor. So if you want to um, choose that on the, in the camera, you can do that here. But I find that it's not really very useful because you get a, a button. If you choose to keep this button up at the top to um, choose your, um, your crop mode, it's a lot more useful here than it is in the menu. But if you want to do it in the menu, that's where it's at as well. Optical image stabilization. So this stays on whenever I shoot at night, but when it's during the day, I turn it off because I find that it introduces some like movement. I don't know what it is. There's something going on with the um, the way that it stabilizes the image whenever it doesn't need it. So if I'm even if I'm shooting in high shutter speeds, this sometimes likes to uh, autocorrect for that, and it makes my image blurry even though I'm at a pretty good. Uh, shutter speed and f-stop so if you don't want to introduce any type of like uh, motion blur uh, i would turn that off unless you're shooting at night at night it's awesome during the day not so much electronic shutter if you always want to have your electronic shutter extended or always on or off here's your options as well flash settings again i don't really use flash but these are the settings that um, you have here in the Leica q2 so this next page is user profiles, and this is very useful. This is where you get all your different profiles. So I have my three profiles, but you get actually six here in Leica Q2. So if you want to actually use all six, you can do that. So you can manage your profiles here at the bottom. And what you can do, you can save a new profile. You can rename a profile, delete it, export it, or import one. So what I like to do is rename my profile. So here you can actually either use users or you can rename them. So right here, I have this name to street, this next one, street at night, and my portrait one. So once you get all your settings dialed in, you go to user profile, you go to manage profiles, and then you save it. And if you want to customize it even further, you, you go to rename profile as well. Next option is video resolution. Again, I don't really use video much, but the one I do like to use is Cinema 4K at 24 FPS. And then I did dial in my video settings a little bit more. Sorry, not this, the video styles. So here you get all your different profiles, just like your photo profiles. So I still like to shoot in natural, but I customize it even further here in video style settings. And then I go to natural and I can lower, I can actually customize it as well. So the current profile that I'm at, I'm not, I haven't customized it, but the way that I like to have it is, low contrast and then lower the sharpness since this lens is super sharp especially in video i like to make sure that i can lower it as much as i can well um, without like making it the lowest setting or whatever 
and then I also like to desaturate the image just so it's as close as neutral as possible. So that's the prof the options I like to use for my video settings. You also get capture assistant tools here. You get a grid. So if you like to shoot in, in the rule of thirds, you get that here. You also get, uh, if you want to make sure that you're not clipping your highlights, you get an option here, your horizon leveler. I find that's a little distracting for photos, so I, I always turn it off, but for, for video, I usually have that on. And your histogram, I almost always have that on, and it's always here at the top left of your of your image. Display settings is where you can dial in your LCD and your EVF stuff. So I usually keep this in auto. It's usually pretty nice. I don't have to do much to it, but if you want to um, increase or decrease your brightness for your LCD, if you want to adjust your color, you can do that. Your EVF brightness, your color adjustment as well here for the EVF and the frame rate for the EVF. And honestly, I can't tell a difference on either one. I just have it at 120 because why not? And I have a couple of batteries anyway, so I just keep it in that. Auto review, I have it off. I find that it's annoying in any camera. I don't like to immediately see the image that I took, especially with um, mirrorless cameras. You already see the image in the EVF. I don't see the the why I should bother with that, so I always have that off. And lastly is customizable control. And you can not just customize your favorites, but also your function button, the right wheel button, the wheel assignment, and your zoom lock button. So the Leica Q2 doesn't have a lot of different buttons, but the buttons that it, do, it does have, they are pretty customizable. I usually don't customize stuff on here. What I do is I do it right on the camera. So as you can tell here, there's the function buttons right here. So all you have to do to change the settings on the function button is press and hold and all the different options are right here. Not every button can be assigned to everything, but everything that you can be assigned to it, I find that it's very useful. The function button that I have uh, here in the front, I have it to set to white balance. I find it that it's the most useful there. The next, the next button that I like to customize is right here, the dial, and you can long press. And again, everything comes back to the settings, right? In this one, I have it set to ISO, and I find that it's the most useful there. But again, if you like to just use the, the menu system, you can do that here. Your zoom lock button, I always keep it in zoom. Your wheel assignment, you can. I always keep it in auto since, so it switches to whatever I needed. This next tab is like a photos. We already went through that a little bit. Like a files name, you can rename your files into um, any file that you want. I don't usually mess with that, but if that's something that you like to do, you have that. You can reset the image numbering. Here's your power saving options, um, power saving mode. I have it off, auto power off after two minutes and I power on the camera using the shutter button anyway. So I usually like to observe. And then if I see anything that's coming up, I turn on the camera by just pressing the shutter button. And then the last page is just your date and time, your language, if you wanna reset the camera or if you wanna remap pixels. So yeah, that's all of the menu options on the camera. Hopefully I covered everything, but if I didn't and you have any further questions, please leave in the comment section below. I'm in the comments all the time, especially on newer videos. So yeah, if you have any questions regarding this camera or anything else in particular, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time. Bye.